Hey, we've got some people in here. We're just waiting on Zach from Just Uno to jump in. He's just finishing up his panel, so I'm sure he won't be too far away. Oh, there he is. Look at that. Hey, man. How you doing? Doing great. I mean, it's a good day in Austin, Texas. We got plenty of tacos. We got the sun shining. It's been a couple days with no sun, so it's welcome to Austin, that. Texas, everybody. Exactly right. I mean, we could use it. I'm in London, and gee, I could... Man, I could do some sun. I could do some tacos. Actually, really, the double. So tell me, Zachary, London, you know, I'm from Texas, so first thing I'm thinking, little fog, little mist in the air. Ooh, How are you guys yeah. doing? Yeah, no, that's exactly where we were this morning. It's starting to clear off. And look, I'm from Melbourne originally. And I've been in London, what, about seven years now. You never shake it. Like, it never, you never get used to it. You ne Every time, every winter, I was saying this on a different call earlier today, it's the same every time. It's just like, really? This dark? This cold? Why do people live here again? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> too too many great options great city you know yeah great yeah, yeah, culture yeah. did so you say you're in austin? You out austin yeah austin texas oh man austin i'd love to get to austin at some point i want to send you some barbecue i want to send it your way right now <laughs> exactly exactly it um thank you so much for jumping on the panel i can't believe i i, I scared the shit out of me before Ooh, sorry for swearing uh scared me before i was listening to your panel and just before you joined i heard my co-worker was the next who goes and we've got on this panel zach and i was like oh my god i'm meant to be on the panel but no been there before that is zach is there so everybody who's coming into the breakout double zach it's the highlight of the day i reckon um i'm marketing ops lead at loyalty lion we've got some people coming in now um zach could you give us a little intro for you for people who might not have heard you on the panel just a second ago and we're going to be talking about just uno loyalty all that kind of stuff so you can give us a, a bit of just uno as well yeah so um i've been at just uno over two and a half years uh, i was the prior manager of the just uno plus department and what did that mean that means that you know i was training dep my department as well as i was working uh, with brands on their conversion strategy, brands um, like the first brand that ever created the in-home COVID test, Everly Well, wow. actually, an, yeah, yeah, they're actually an Austin-based brand. Um, they've expanded uh, tremendously 
one of the coolest things I saw them do was start to really utilize the use of the UTM targeting and A-B testing. So knowing that we're running ads on Facebook and Google for a specific product, right, beyond uh, the COVID product because the COVID product had become so popular, but they had a wide variety of products that people weren't exploring uh, that they could do in-home testing for, you know, testosterone or allergies, which is right. huge in Austin. Yeah, um, right. But they were able to start to gather that data about what's happening with our conversion once someone comes on site from an ad. So then they're able to start to build better ads, increase their return on ad uh, spend and, and see a better return on that ad spend, which is we all know with the recent changes become that much more challenging. Um, so now I've transitioned and I'm the lead uh, partner strategist. So I work with agencies day in, day out to find ways to increase their list growth or increase their return on ad spend or help their clients find more uh, conversion opportunities using the Just Uno CRO data suite. And, and that's really where um, I would say Just Uno can provide the real value. It's evaluating your data, A-B testing, and then understanding what's the next move we can do with our on-site messaging to improve that nice one nice one that was i mean that's comprehensive intro but we got through it so fast that's really good i like it a lot um not holding any information back from 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 everyone here today zach no no these are the vips in the breakout <laughs> session these are the, the true believers i like this um so the way these sessions go is that funnily enough there's actually like we've got some people in here already you can actually turn your video and audio on if you want to jump in and ask a question um or if that's not your thing, if it's early where you are, haven't had your cup of coffee yet, pop them in the chat. You can use the Q&A, Q um, ask a question in there, or just pop just pop your questions or anything you like in the chat. It's meant to be collaborative. We want to hear you know, any questions you've got uh, regarding what we just heard in the panel or omnichannel generally, um, or anything you might have specifically for uh, for Justino or for Zach, or when I say Zach, I mean both Zachs. Why not both of us? But why don't I kick us off with, was there something in the panel that you had just done that either surprised you or you thought was like, huh, I hadn't thought of it that way. Um, you know, I think that one thing that did really surprise me was hearing that the most requested message um, has been that, that uh, product fulfillment message, right? And mm -hmm. how I watch my three kids every day when they know a product is coming, walk to the mailbox. And so it clicked in my mind to say, that is where customers as far as a brand being able to create a great experience and trust providing that communication piece and um what it triggered me was to look back during black friday and cyber monday and say that's why we saw such an uptick in the use of just uno banners informing mm -hmm. people at the beginning part of the journey of when you need to purchase in order to make sure you get your gift by the time that you want it. Um, but yeah, that was one thing. And, and just knowing that that's something that a brand can start to really implement either at the front end with banners with Just Uno, our timer feature, but all the way through the journey, you know, with, uh, you know, SMS messages, email messages, whatever you can do to inform your customers that you are building that trust and letting them know what the journey of that product fulfillment is. Um, mm -hmm. That's, that, that was something that really surprised me. Yeah, we've been hearing, I was, a couple of the other panels have been speaking to that idea of connection coming from transparency, making sure that your customers have, you know, there's no point in hiding, you know, holding back that information. If it's, if they're going to find it useful, helpful, they can self-help, all of those kinds of things. I want to, you mentioned A-B testing, and I know that's obviously a, a, probably a topic very close to your heart, um, but, you know, we're, the amount of channels that are available, the amount of opportunities to discuss or to, to, to have touch points with customers, where it can be a little bit daunting, I'm sure, for, for newer merchants. Where should they start with A-B testing? You know, what I love with A-B testing is it starts all the way from what type of message do I want to provide to my visitors and what type of message resonates with them. And this is a strategy uh, that, that can be kind of new to a lot of people, but oftentimes what I will do is I will go to Instagram or I will go to Facebook of that brand and we will start to use that social media as a free focus group forum. I will start to look at certain 
images and products and posts and start to understand what is engaging people, what is triggering people. Why do I want to know that? Because I want to mimic that on my on-site messages. I want to mimic that in my emails, right? I want to mimic that in my SMS. Um, and so being able to start to utilize that, it, it, it helps because the first step is you have to have at least an A version. And if you're putting your best foot forward, then the B version is what is the risk that we're going to take here to further optimize that message? Well, I found that if I show this certain product in a B image, I'm actually getting more engagements than my A image. And how did I find that? Well, I saw two images on my uh, social media that were getting a lot of comments and engagements. And I want to pair those um, because I'm actually running ads uh, about that specific product. And now I need to understand what steps can I do to further optimize that message. And you would be surprised that uh, a simple background change of an image, a simple uh, way of changing your, your text. Maybe you ask a question and that engages people to leave their, their contact, their first party data, their email, their, their SMS a lot more because they were made aware um, you know, through your messaging um, that that is something that's more valuable to them rather than you just saying, hey, you want 10% off today. You already found out that, that people want to know more information about those products. They want to know when new product releases are happening. And you gathered that just from the engagements that you saw on social media. Yeah, I love that idea of just trying to elicit a response using your B or using your both your A and B to try to find something that just gets anything. Like, can I just get someone to engage at all? I'd love to hear in the chat anybody who's done you know some basic experiments on doing anything that they feel is like they didn't see or know until they started testing, or even anybody who's got some things they may be a little bit of afraid of testing. Um, where you know, would you say Zach that that B is the opportunity to do something a little wild? Yeah, I would I would say that um, when A-B testing, if you want to go wild, the great thing about understanding that is you will either find that that risk or that 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 wild uh, reach, it might resonate with your customers. You didn't know about that. Um, or you might find that that's not the strategy and that's that much more impactful because half of being a successful business person is knowing what not to do. Right. Because that'll steer you in the in the direction one thing I can give advice on A-B testing is make one small incremental change at a time so that you're mm -hmm. measuring that. And it can be as simple as where I'm adding a background shadow to like a coupon layer or an email submit button. Um, one of my favorite things to A-B test is instead of just putting, uh, you know, submit your email or sign up, make that an empowerment message like uh, I'm beautiful or I'm a VIP, test those different, what I'll call CTAs. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that people want to click on buttons that empower them, right? And so um, make one change at a time. People have often asked me, you know, I want to load up my site with all of these different journeys. That's fine. But remember the foundational journeys, your lead capture, your exit, your cart abandoner, and then start to optimize those through A-B testing. Yeah, I can imagine if you as well, if you're just running too many tests, I mean, it's, there's effort that goes into testing, right? The, well, I'm, I'm sure Justin it definitely helps take the effort out of that. But you still mm -hmm. need to be aware whether you're an e-commerce manager, marketer, CEO, founder, you know, if you're running the whole company yourself, or if you've got a whole team of people doing this kind of stuff, you need to be able to still make that deliberate choice. We're going to go and change this, not just for fun, because but because it has an outcome that we want to elicit or a reaction or something empowering. And then we're going to go and say, okay, how long are we going to run this test for? How are we going to judge its success and performance against A, or, or even if you're not running a test like an AB kind of setting. So there is, you still need that deliberate attention to the thing. And if you run so many tests at once, as you said, to your core journey, you'll never get that benchmark. You'll never get the baseline. Then you just end up with a huge amount of variables of like, well, one person took this really weird journey and got to, you know, got to a win state for us. Um, we've got a nice question in the, in the Q&A, which, um, which I think is quite pertinent to this, which is, how do I add pop-ups to my site without appearing you know, spammy or disrupting that core customer journey, just like we were discussing? That is my favorite question. Um, that is a question that I'm asked at dinners, at webinars. It's the number one. You know, you hear pop-ups and people think, you know, is that a thing of the past? Um, do a little research. You will definitely find that pop-ups uh, increase conversions time and time again. But to go specific to this question, 
how do I add pop-ups to my site without appearing spammy or disrupting the customer journey? We just do know, first and foremost, we have over 150 specific visitor journey rule sets, so you can get very specific. The other thing that we do, especially for our mobile users, is what's called an in-page promotion. Uh, with an in-page promotion, it can the promotion will actually sit on your website. It'll look just like a add to cart button or it'll look like a, uh, uh, you know, a sizing button, right? And the way that we do that is we target an element on your site and we just place that promotion there. And this is what I call a visitor initiated promotion. So oftentimes I will put that little CTA on a product page right under an add to cart and it'll say like join our VIP. When they click that, it can open up a full page where they can then leave their VIP. They can access that discount, right? The other thing I would say that's a huge advantage that we see A-B tested a lot is the use of a tab feature. So the visitor lands, they scroll one page on mobile. That's when your lead capture comes up. It's a new visitor. They might not see any value in getting a 10% or 15% off or a free uh, digital book guide or something along those lines that you can provide people. So they close the promotion, but having a small tab that travels with them on the side of their mobile now that they found the product that they like and they say, you, if I could get that discount, I would buy it today, but I closed it. That tab will call the promotion back. So now that customer experience has been uh, created uh, in, in a very beneficial way. Um, the last thing I'll speak to about not becoming too spammy and things like that is you can A-B test against a control group, meaning 50% of the people that come in to fall into that rule set, they see that promotion. The other 50 don't. And if you find that conversions are increasing with that A version versus that B control group, then you quickly know, I'm not interrupting people's journeys. What I'm doing is I'm adding value to that. Um, so that would be that would be the, the best strategy to start that at first. I love that idea of... of understanding that not all journeys, not all of those core customer journeys are always linear, right? People bounce around a site. And, and so it's always difficult to get your timing right. I loved that tabbed slide in approach of like, yeah, but now I need it. Now I'm in a different part of my journey where that actually makes sense to me. I love that. We've had a couple mm -hmm. of really good questions come in. Um, someone, uh, Ellie has said that I think the hardest part, uh, and we're going to get to Mackenzie's question as well. And uh, definitely there's a question in the Q&A we'll come to. Um, but let's start with Ellie's, which is the hardest part about A-B testing is when the results are only minimally different. You know, you get a bit of similarity and, you know, A needs B by a little bit of a margin and you don't have those concrete results. What should, you know, to empower our, you know, our e-commerce managers and our entrepreneurs, what, they should, what should they do in those circumstances? You know, you will often see that the, um, the optimization piece is very small. And what I've spoken with my clients and helped them understand is optimization pieces and, and data that you're found through these A-B tests, those are what I call conversion crumbs, right? A small bit of a crumb to create that ultimate ROI or that conversion cake. Yes, you probably will not see a huge jump, but one small image change, we're talking about if three more emails came in or if one more purchase was made, right? Well, at the end of the day, I always challenge my customers and I say, well, what is the value of three more emails to you? What is the value of one more purchase? It's a lot because you're building on the lifetime value of your customers. So, you know, go with whatever the small uh, uh, adjustment was that uh, did push you in the right direction. It's, you know, help your, your, your accounts and you as a business owner, as an e-commerce owner, know you're moving in the right direction. Don't expect, you know, these, these uh, wide, uh, you know, one-offs, these huge jumps. No, it doesn't work like that. Like I said, with just Uno, I look at it like a digital sales assistant. When I used to be a manager um, of Best Buy, like over 10 years ago, and I would speak with my sales associates, I would say, this is what I want you to say, right? So that's the same thing as your message in Just Uno. Then I evaluate it, what happened? But I told this associate to say something different and we found that that strategy worked better. Now we're gonna adjust the department. That's what you do with your messages. Think of it just like a brick and mortar. This is your digital on-site sales assistant that's directing people. So when you find those small wins, keep moving down that direction and optimize that message 
one thing at a time. But yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll find that very often. It's not going to be huge leaps and bounds. Yeah, that incremental growth as well. I mean, it's, it's scary when there's, when there's big change, you know, that can go both ways, right? Yeah, sometimes you'll stumble across something like, oh, turns out the blue button converts way better, like insanely better. But I mean, the chances that it was just that, I'd, I'd probably dig into that data a little bit more. But when you see that incremental change, yeah, like what was it about that? Let's follow that further. The biggest thing I see where I've seen a huge jump is when you're uh, in the beginning part of the visitor journey testing a static lead capture versus a gamification. And people have often said, you know, my brand and gamification. Well, with Just Uno, it's not just the normal spin to win that you probably have traditionally seen. We have uh, three gamification options like a, a slot machine, a scratch off. Um, test those and you'll mm -hmm. find that we're all humans we love games and you might have thought your brand uh, identity was different than having a game hey you can always run that uh, gamification um, to those visitors who didn't interact the first time and so when they return take another chance put that maybe three pages down but mm -hmm. now you're evaluating a different journey with a different communication piece and you might find that you know your customers like games yeah, don't throw the tool out right away. Try it at different journeys. I love that. Get them on the rebound. Um, we've got a yeah. great question here from uh, Mackenzie. Um, bear with me. I'm going to read through all of this because I think the detail is important. Uh, but for a brand that's just starting out with A-B testing, do you have recommendations on, recommendations on determining where to start testing? For example, starting with the PDP or a homepage and testing something small like a CTA color or something. Should we try something bigger? You know, understand it's, mm. it's you know, start with identifying a problem. I mean, the problem is usually like, I want more, get me more conversion. I want a higher conversion rate. Um, but uh, what if there's no obvious issues? What if it's difficult to kind of say, well, should I just change something? What if I have a negative impact? So where should people start? The first place to understand where to start as either a, um, a representative of a company or if you're your own e-commerce uh, owner is what is most valuable to you, right? Is it the list growth? Is it return on ad spend? Is it, um, you know, items being abandoned in cart or are you trying to reduce your um, your bounce rate or are you trying to increase your average order value? Now, to just take it to the basics, I would say that, you know, you definitely want to have three foundational pieces, which is going to be your lead capture, growing your list. You're going to want to have an exit strategy, people that are bouncing after, you know, three or four pages with no items in cart. And then, of course, focusing on the conversion, which would be your cart abandoner. That's targeting people that have an amount over zero and they're on the cart URL. Um, those would be the first pieces I would say to start to A-B test. Um, you can add a what we call it's now going to be a new foundational piece. It's called a threshold banner, basically meaning we know that free shipping or shipping cost is the number one reason people will leave items in cart. We've all seen the meme. Hey, I'm, I don't have a problem with $50 in my cart, but $5 in shipping, like I'm out yeah, of here. No way. <laughs> so in Just Uno, we have banners where provide people with the option, basically saying we can't offer free shipping. We know that. But what we can do is if you have $100 in cart, then we can provide you with a coupon that'll offset that shipping cost. And so there's a bit, again, of gamification where you'll see the banner dynamically change. Zach's added $50 to cart. It'll say, you're $50 away from free shipping. Once I hit what that AOV is, I'll get a congratulations banner. Congratulations, you know, you've received the free shipping. You can apply this to offset that. That's a great strategy. And again, A-B test that. Maybe the banner needs to have a bit of animation, you know, where the, the words are sliding in. Uh, you can use our scrolling text so that that makes the human psychology say this information is more uh, valuable. Yeah, yeah this is a, a lot of things, but I would say start with those three to four foundational pieces when you want to start to A-B test. Yeah, I think that's right as well. I like the idea of it's, it can sometimes when there's no obvious issues, you can start to say things like, well, what would I like more of? Like, and you know, one thing that we obviously, loyalty line, loyalty, retention, repeat purchase, higher lifetime value. We think there's always more you can get from your, you know, your guest customers. How do you turn them into repeat and returning customers? So if you're collecting a little bit of data about that checkout, what can you be doing uh, to encourage that next purchase? And, and points are obviously a great way to do that. Um, you, were, you were talking about shipping then. We found that that's a really nice way to offset that feeling of, well, okay, 
I can't give you free shipping, but you're going to get these points, which in future you can return when you redeem those against free shipping later or redeem those against discounts or free products or expedited shipping. So it might not be free, but we're giving you express uh, or we, we can get you products well before you know, somebody who isn't a member of the program can get them. So leaning into that VIP gamification and some of maybe just a little bit of that delayed payoff to get people coming back, um, all things you can test. One thing I love when I work with customers who do have rewards programs like Loyalty Lion is, um, you know, we talked about interrupting a journey. Imagine this, I, I'm at a brick and mortar, I put something in my cart and a sales associate says, hey, we just want you to know that, um, you know, we give points back for every purchase. I wasn't even made aware of that. So now my business transaction has just increased that much more. So you can have a pop-up that when an item's added to cart, you show this one time in the journey, it has a CTA that can send that person to join the rewards program. We've now increased that experience to say, hey, you buy from us, we give to you. That's one of my favorite things. When I go to restaurants or when I make a purchase, when I see something come back to me that says, you know, when you spend more with us, you get something back. Exactly like Zachary said, that's going to offset some of that shipping, some of, you know, maybe the product wasn't, you know, in stock that day. You're creating that loyalty through a business transaction. You should always think about that this transaction for the, your visitors is let me give you something if you give me something. How can you continue to create that value for them? Yeah, positive value exchange all the time. It feels like marketing 101. I can remember my first marketing tutor <laughs> saying that to me. All we, all we do is value exchange. All we're, to, all we're talking about is offsetting you. Can you, I mean, so much of what we do as brands and so much of what we do as, as merchants or what merchants do is try to create that feeling of reciprocity. I'm going to give you something. They're going to give you a great customer experience. Oh, you know, all I need is a little bit of your time and you can, and you'll get something in return. You might buy a product in a little bit. We talk about always, you know, surprise and delight, you know, making, make it feel a little bit more special when they receive it. I mean, the idea of getting a well-timed pop-up through my journey or a little bit of gamification so that I could win an extra product or some extra, you know, double points on my purchase, all those kinds of things that just make me go like, oh. I'm getting something for nothing. You know, you talked about selling at Best Buy. I used to work at a, um, an Australian department store, Debbie Jones, years and years and years ago. And I remember a sales mentor I had at the time was just like, you should feel as the customer that you got a great deal. And the salesperson should also feel that they got more out of the customer than maybe they thought they would. And so both parties just walk away feeling great. Like they both got a huge amount of value. And so how do you build that into your e-commerce journey by doing things as you just said about making sure that people feel like they're getting that little bit extra or that they're being treated a little bit more special than just the average the average punter what do you you know when we, we've, we've talked about pop-ups that kind of thing what about personalization of those to make them feel extra special yeah the personalization is big um i would say one of the biggest strategies that's happening right now especially throughout the uh the agency atmosphere is the use of utm targeting right i'm running ads on facebook and google and those ads are specifically showing different products or they're showing different incentives you can just grab the utm from that ad manager and put that into one simple uh, referring url rule and now you're going to start to create a, a, a mirrored, uh, um, you know, on-site promotion based off of the value that the customer already showed you in your trigger marketing. I land, I see a similar image. Maybe you add a, 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 an additional product image. Maybe you add a static customer review. Maybe you add a CTA that says, hey, you know, you're coming from uh, this specific product. We also offer rewards. So if you click here, Let's help you get your product and let's help you get rewards for that. So now you've increased that experience, but that's where you're able to start to target, not have too many messages on the site, but this is a specific demographic that's being tracked and you're showing them a relevant message already based off of the value and engagement that they uh, showed you that they have when they clicked on your ad. So I would say doing the UTM targeting, what's the next step after that? Be tested, you know, let's show a different product. Let's say that if you're 
cart value is, you know, double of what it is, you're going to earn double the points. Maybe that incentivizes people to not only make a first purchase, but a larger purchase. And they even were thinking about because now they're going to get double the points for that. And they didn't even know you had a, a rewards program because that wasn't explained in the trigger marketing in your ads. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say showing relevant messages to relevant customer journeys through UTM targeting, that's going to be a great strategy for any brand. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, that that kind of continuous experience, that's good because it, it can feel so impersonal. You're like, I've already engaged with this brand. I've already engaged with some of that messaging. I've already had an impression. And here I am and you're treating me new, but I'm not new. You Surely you know I I looked at this thing, I watched your video, I clicked in your ad on YouTube, whatever it is. And here you are treating me as someone who doesn't know anything about the thing. When you can join that up, as you said, similar messaging or start to piggyback off new products or, or product expansion ranges off that initial messaging, try different things. That's hugely powerful stuff. Um, yeah, have you got anything you'd like to finish on? Um, because we're, we, we've got, we, we just- Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, one thing I would, I would say that's a great strategy is you're here and you're evaluating uh, rewards programs and you're also evaluating what can I do on site? And I don't want to have too many messages on site. You know, in Just Uno, I've seen a large number of big accounts, agency accounts target return visitors who've made at least one purchase. They come back to site and you can have a banner and on that you again exactly what zachary said thanks for coming back we appreciate your first purchase and because of that we want to help you know that on your next purchase we can either offer you an incentive and also offer you our rewards program um, when people maybe miss that the first time again this mobile experience with a banner or a pop-up that's just like the size of a chat bot uh, that maybe is just going to send them to the rewards program so they can get that more information about the value there that's a great experience um, so definitely know that you can strategize and use these specific customer journey targeting rules um, you know, to, to create a better experience as well as an accelerated uh, conversion experience um, on your site. So uh, if anything, what I always like to leave people with is remember, you can always A, B test a control group. So if you're a little wary about pop ups on your site, do that A, B test control group. And when you start to see the conversions increase based off of, um, you know, that A version and the control group is, is lower in AOV and lower in conversions, lower in engagements, you know you're going in the right direction. You're providing messages that are helping your brand and, and, and providing a better customer experience. Yeah, that's it. Right? I love that. Better customer experience. I love the accelerating the purchase, accelerating the customer experience. Love that too. Zach, we are, we are out of time. It's been an absolute delight working with you, man. I loved it. Uh, thank you so much for everybody for joining us and for the questions. You can uh, find Zach's details uh, on the reception page and you can have a look at the people there. Um, I'm sure they can just go to Just Uno uh, if they want to speak to you as well. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much again, Zach. Cheers. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. You have a wonderful uh, Thursday and reach out to me at Just Uno. You'll see my email there. I'm on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to answer these additional questions um look forward to talking to you soon perfect thanks guys see you on the main stage bye